evening. I'm Jim Leach with Cox Communications. Thank you for being with us. As a part of our public affairs commitment to our Orange County community and customers, Cox Communications is hosting a series of candidate forums featuring candidates for the general election coming up in November, on November 2nd. The candidates with us today are running for the 70th California Assembly District seat. They are Mark Baldwin, Chuck DeVore, and Carl Maras. Here's the format for our forum today. Each candidate will be afforded two minutes to make an opening statement. I will then pose a series of questions to the candidates, and they will each have one minute to respond in turn. Then at the end of the half hour, each candidate will have one minute to provide a summary closing. Our first statement is from Mr. Mars. Thank you. My name is Carl Mars. I'm a 68-year-old retired chemical engineer, and I'm the Democratic candidate for the 70th Assembly District. I want to thank Cox Communications for inviting us here today. As a Democrat, I hold with traditional, traditional Democratic values. I believe in a woman's right to choose. I believe in protecting the environment, and I believe in protecting workers' rights. I'm for promoting small business, and I support public education. But most important, I'm a fiscal conservative, and I believe that politics is the art of the possible. I'm a pragmatist. I believe in compromise where it will advance the ben it will be to the benefit of the people of the state of California. Right now, California faces some very serious fiscal matters. Part of this uh, we've solved with the, with the bond issue that, the governor, that was passed, but we still have some very serious issues. We have to look for ways of saving money. One of the ways we can save money is to decriminalize victimless crimes. And this way, we can release from prisons some of our drug users. It's much easier to treat drug use as a disease rather than as, as a crime, and throwing people in jail is much less effective than treating them uh, outside of jail and much more cost effective. We also look, need to look very closely at the governor's proposals on reducing the amount of state agencies and boards, and we can save quite a bit of money there. And I commend the government for his actions in this uh, respect. And we also need to help the people of California save money elsewhere. One of the places we can save more money is by reforming or continuing the reform of workman's compensation and also by uh, doing more for reducing medical costs which are now ballooning out of sight. I believe that single-payer health care is the best way to do this, but I'm willing to listen to those who prepare, uh, propose other me methods. Thank you. Thank you. Our next opening statement is from Mr. DeVore. Hi, my name is Chuck DeVore. I, lived, uh, I currently live in Irvine with my wife of 16 years, Diane. Diane is a public school teacher in Irvine, and our two children, Jenny and Amy, attend a public school in Irvine. I'm running for the State Assembly because we need to continue the work that we started last year when California voters overwhelmingly approved the recall of Governor Gray Davis and installed Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger into office. There are a number of reforms that we need to pursue uh, in the state of California. These reforms aim to cut the state bureaucracy, reduce regulations, get a handle on taxes, and make California a more business-friendly place. Because when California becomes a more business-friendly place, you'll find an increase in jobs. And with an increase in jobs, you're going to get an increase in payroll taxes, and the state budget will begin to repair itself. Look, uh, last year, California was rated number one by Forbes magazine as the number one worst place in America to do business. This was due to a combination of a number of factors, including our broken workers' compensation system, and obviously the governor has gotten a really good start on fixing this system. Uh, but in addition to that, our high taxes, the complexity of our tax code, the legal environment in the state of California, all of these things together have conspired to cause California to export jobs. We're exporting jobs to places like Nevada and Arizona and Colorado, and we have to stop. We have to stop this kind of exportation. We need to reduce our taxes. My Democrat opponent, Carl Mars, he has uh, proposed raising six different kinds of taxes uh, to include alcohol taxes, pardon me, uh, no, capital gains taxes, cigarette taxes, corporate taxes, income taxes, vehicle taxes, gasoline taxes, and even a tax on the internet. And this is something that we don't need as California taxpayers. We need to reduce taxes, we need to get our fiscal house in order, and bring business to the state of California. Thank you. Thank you. And now opening statement from Mr. Baldwin. 
It is known as the wasted vote syndrome. Each election year, over and over again, you hear the same thing. I like you libertarians, but you have no chance at winning. Or, I'm afraid if I vote for you, it will split the outcome of the vote and the individual who I do not like will then go into office. This election is different though. In this race, you're not voting for either President or U.S. Senate. You're voting for State Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your opportunity to vote your conscience without worrying about whether or not you're going to waste your vote. If elected, I would never vote for higher taxes and I would always push for smaller government. Being a school bus driver for Capistrano Unified School District and the holder of a trucker's license, I would push for bills which would privatize services provided at the DMV. For example, I would open up the private, giving the private sector the opportunity to give driving tests. I would also propose a bill which would allow smog check garages to issue vehicle registration tags. These are just a couple bills which would help relieve congestion at DMV offices throughout the state. There is no incumbent in this race. Therefore, I think I have a better chance than the average libertarian of doing better than other candidates running under the libertarian ticket, which is why I hope you will vote for me, because the more people who vote for me will result in us sending that much more of a message to the two bigger parties. During the next 30 minutes, listen closely and ask yourself who will do a better job at pushing for smaller government and lower taxes. Thank you for your opening statements, candidates. Now fun comes the fun part. We begin the question and answer portion of our forum. Uh, I'm going to pose a question and each candidate will have one minute to respond in turn. Our first question. There are 16 ballot propositions qualified for this November election. It's been said that the reason there are so many ballot propositions every election cycle is that the legislature isn't doing its job in addressing issues that are important to voters. Do you agree with this assertion? And if so, how do you see this fact affecting your district and the job that you're running to do? Mr. DeVore. Well, I partially agree with that assertion. And the reason why I say partially is that because of the way California's initiative process works, any individual with a lot of money and a plan to get anything on the ballot can do so. Uh, I think a great example of this is uh, a Proposition 66. This is the proposition to significantly weaken our three strikes law. And the person who's pushing for this Proposition 66 is a multimillionaire whose son is in jail right now because he's a three striker. And a successful initiative would actually get his son out of jail. That's why this guy is pushing it. So I think you have an example here in the most crass example possible of how wealthy interests can essentially try to buy a spot on our ballot for their very narrowly held uh, special interests. Now three strikes is working in the state. We have very low crime rates as the result of it. Yes, it costs money, but think of the money that we end up saving by not having those criminals on our streets. Thank you. The question has to do with the plenitude of ballot propositions and whether they are a symptom of the legislature not doing its job. Whether the candidates agree with this assertion and how this, effect, how this fact will affect their representation in this district. Mr. Baldwin. Yes, it's true. We do have a lot of initiatives on the ballot this year. And yes, it is true that usually you have to have a lot of money to be able to get them on the ballot. Uh, as far as making your decision on how to uh, vote yes or no. Basically, I found the best way uh, to look at it is if any initiative with the word, word bond in the initiative, vote no on. Uh, you know, it basically right there raises higher taxes. As far as uh, stem cell research, Proposition 71, all that is pointing to is research itself. It does not guarantee in any way that it's going to bring a cure to anything. And they're all alternatives. Proposition 66 uh, leads to the the fact that half the people in our prison population are nonviolent drug offenders and it is a bad law and it should be restricted to violent drug offenders not nonviolent drug offenders thank you question has to do with the 16 ballot propositions there's an awful lot of them and they seem to crop up every election cycle it's been asserted that the reason there are so many is that the legislature isn't doing its job the question to the candidates is do you agree with this assertion and if so 
How do you see this fact affecting your district and the job you would do there? Mr. Mars. Well, I would say that there is some truth in that. One of the reasons we have this problem is that in order to uh, enact more taxes, which could be needed in some cases, and uh, especially right now, we should be able to consider some additional taxes to get us out of uh, our present fiscal problem. It takes a two-thirds vote of the legislature in order to do this. And I feel that uh, this, this does uh, lead to more uh, propositions being put on the ballot. I'd like to say a few words, though, in general about uh, some of these issues. I would uh, tend to agree with uh, Mark Baldwin that uh, we do have too many people in prison, as I stated earlier, and also I feel that Prop 66 should be passed because it, gives, uh, it gets away from the three strikes thing, putting people in jail for very, for very frivolous reasons. Um, in general, I think the legislature does try to do a job, but our initiative system has worked, and although there are an awful lot of initiatives, we, we still need it. Thank you very much. Going on to our next question, health care has been identified as a critical concern for citizens. As Orange County continues to grow, local hospitals, emergency rooms, and trauma centers are being stretched to the limits of their resources. What will you do as a representative of, for the 70th District to address the critical concerns of both citizens and the health care community? Question goes to Mr. Baldwin. In America and in California, there was a time when we had the best health care system in the world. It was a time when a stay in the hospital would be a few days pay versus a few months pay. It was a time when doctors would make house calls. We didn't hear about trauma centers, emergency rooms, or hospitals being shut down prior to the government getting involved in them. The intention is there for higher taxes and more government infringement for a better health care system. However, we've seen this just backfire in our face. The best thing to do is to get the government out of health care and let individuals assume personal responsibility for their own health care. Thank you. We're talking about health care as a critical concern for citizens. And what would the candidate do as representative of the 70th district to address the critical concerns of both citizens and the health care community? Mr. Maris. Most of the rest of the world has adopted a single-payer health care system. And although these are not perfect, they are better than what we have here in the United States. Right now, between 20 and 30 percent of our health care dollars are spent on administration and profit. And let's face it, they're spent on bureaucracy in the private health care industry. If we go to a single-payer system, we would have a much lower level of bureaucracy. It would run between 5 and 10 percent of costs, and we might even be able to get it down to 5 percent. There's a reason that the rest of the industrialized world has gone to this kind of a system. It pays off. And we would actually wind up spending less on health care and be able to spend more on, on hospitals and other things rather than spending on profit and administration. There are some other things we can do short of that. We can look at uh, bulk purchases of drugs. We can look at uh, purchasing drugs in Canada. I realize that there's been some some rather fallacious arguments advanced toward against, against doing that, but I feel that uh, this, is, this is a viable option. Thank you. Talking about health care as a critical issue and what the candidate would do as a representative to address the critical concerns of the citizens and the health care community, Mr. DeVore. There are a number of reasons why our health care system is currently being stretched to the limit. Uh, among these are the burden that illegal immigrants put on our emergency, emergency services, the current uh, uh, way that we pay for health care through insurance companies and through the government, lawsuits, uh, a number of things. I would have to, though, strongly disagree with my Democrat opponent's prescription to do a third-party pay plan. You know, as humans, we're all mortal. We all get sick. We all eventually leave this planet one way or the other. Most of us, if we're normal, will spend 90 percent of our health care costs in the last year of our life. What you find with these industrialized countries that have the government paying for health care is that it becomes a massive bureaucracy and you very quickly have to ration health care because we can never all get enough health care to live forever. You just can't do it. We need to go to a system that uses medical savings accounts and has a catastrophic coverage for those things that would exceed the medical savings account amount. Thank you. Moving on to our next question. 
Concerns have been raised recently regarding the security of Southern California ports, the San Onofre nuclear power facility here in South Orange County, and other sites that might be the target of terrorists. What more needs to be done to ensure the security of these critical sites? And what will you do in the legislature to ensure that the district receives its fair share of homeland security dollars and resources? Turn first to Mr. Maras. This is uh, an issue really that is uh, as much national as it is, as it is state. The people who, are who would be responsible for this are our police and fire and possibly some specially trained people that would be looking at such things as port security and the security of the San Onofre nuclear facility. But the money for this needs to come from the federal government, largely because this type of thing, um, national security, is largely a federal requirement that we meet. Now, if we're required to do this by the state, uh, it puts an undue burden on our state. It, our, our state was not attacked. It was uh, New York, and although we are all Americans, I think the burden of this should be shared by all uh, citizens equally. One of the problems we're having right now is uh, California would be a very prime target for terrorists, yet we are not getting our fair share of homeland uh, security budgets. I think we get about $5 per person in the state of Wyoming, which has almost nothing that would be of interest to the terrorists, terrorists is getting about 30 to $35. So this has to end. We're talking about the issue of homeland security in Southern California and in South Orange County. What more needs to be done to ensure the security of our critical sites here? And what will you do in the legislature to ensure that the district receives its fair share of homeland security dollars and resources? Mr. DeVore. Yeah, you know, this is a really good question. I'm a major in the California Army National Guard, and I've actually taken part in some of the plans and efforts to keep our state safe. That having been said, however, I am very disturbed with what I see to be a pork barrel mentality for Homeland Security, where you have various local agencies vying with their political officials to get more and more money for Homeland Security, and a lot of this money is spent in ways that do not make us safer. Uh, personally, uh, and I believe that uh, nationally, we need to look to continue uh, to stay on the strategic offensive, to go after the Islamo-fascist terrorists, wherever they are, to destroy them because we're in a war right now, and if we just sit back and try to uh, protect our own borders, protect our own assets, eventually they'll get lucky. We have to get lucky every time. They have to get lucky once. The best way to be safe is to go out and kill the enemies of America overseas to play, as we call in the Army, an away game rather than playing a home game here on our soil. Thank you for your response. The question has to do with homeland security and the critical sites in Orange County. What more needs to be done to ensure those, the security of those sites, and what will you do as a representative of this district to ensure that this county and the district receives its fair share of homeland security dollars and resources? Mr. Baldwin. This is a national issue that does affect California and Orange County. Here's the problem. Our national defense has become a national offense. And the moment we have sent our troops overseas to over 100 countries, we have lost this protection in the state and in our county. I would hope that we could get our troops home from overseas and or the fraction of the cost of what we're spending now on them, our national defense. We can have a national defense for 50 to 75 billion dollars, which would not only protect America but our state and county. I would also push for the Second Amendment and cut these gun laws which have been a complete violation to the Second Amendment so people can also protect themselves at home because our law enforcement cannot always be there for us. Thank you. We'll move on to our next question. Recently, the governor vetoed a bill that would have allowed undocumented immigrants to apply for a driver's license. Proponents of the bill say that despite its allowing individuals in the U.S. illegally to apply for a license, the bill would have had the effect of making certain that all drivers in the state are tested, licensed, and insured, and in so doing, would have enhanced public safety. Do you support the idea of requiring the licensing of undocumented immigrants? And if so, would you support such an effort in Sacramento in the next session? Our question goes to Mr. DeVore. I completely support the governor's veto of this ridiculous measure. You know, this is not about driving. This is not at all about vehicle safety. This is about giving people a form of identification that would allow them to more easily violate the laws of the United States. Let me explain briefly. If any of one of us goes down to Mexico or even Germany or any other country and we drive on their roads, 
What do we use as our driver's license? Most of us would use our California driver's license. A few of us who are more sophisticated might get an international driver's license. My question always has been, look, if these people know how to drive, they probably have a Mexican driver's license. Why aren't they using Mexican driver's licenses when they're here driving on California's roads? Well, the reason why they're not wanting to use Mexican driver's licenses is because they're here illegally. They want a form of identification that would allow them to set up bank accounts, to get government services, etc. And that's why I'm strongly opposed to the idea of giving illegal immigrants driver's licenses and why I support Governor Schwarzenegger's veto of this very dangerous and ill-conceived measure. Thank you. Question is, do you support the idea of requiring the licensing of undocumented immigrants? And if so, would you support such an effort in Sacramento in the next legislature if elected? Mr. Baldwin. I am opposed to undocumented citizens receiving a driver's license and opposed to any initiative in Sacramento to push for it. However, the problem is, is not the fact that they should be licensed. Not the problem is, is that we have government state licenses to begin with. The truth of the matter is, by way of the private sector, we could assure that we'd have much safer drivers on the street by letting the private sector provide road tests, and that would be another bill I would be pushing for if I make it in Sacramento. So basically, um, I don't want to see more and more government licensing, whether it's on the federal, state, or local level. Thank you. We're discussing the issue of the governor's recent veto of a proposal to allow undocumented immigrants to obtain a driver's license. And the question is, do you support the idea of requiring the licensing of undocumented immigrants? And if so, would you support such an effort in Sacramento in the next legislature if elected? Mr. Mars. I would prefer to see undocumented uh, workers with driver's licenses, provided that it was understood that a driver's license is only a license to drive. It is not a statement or a document that says that you're here legally. And unfortunately, right now, most people assume that if you have a driver's license, you're in this country legally. Uh, that is an unfortunate state of affairs. I personally would feel that I would rather have undocumented workers knowing how to drive in California. Uh, they'll, they're going to drive whether they have a license or not. Um, but the whole problem of undocumented workers is something that would take an awful lot of time here to discuss. Let me just say one thing about that. If we want action on undocumented workers or illegal aliens or whatever you want to call them, the first place to start is start putting very heavy fines on businesses that employ them. If we start finding businesses like Walmart that have undocumented workers in their stores, I'm sure that you would start seeing some action on undocumented workers. Thank you. Thank you for your responses. Our next question. The Orange County business community has identified the issues of transportation and mobility, affordable housing, as critically important to the future of business in South Orange County and California. Select one of these issues and tell us how you, if elected, will have an impact on behalf of the district in Sacramento. Question goes to Mr. Baldwin. Housing ta tax has gone through the roof. Uh, we did have Proposition 13, but it doesn't help new homeowners. Uh, I would push to repeal housing tax altogether. It basically just um, is a higher tax and one of many taxes which we do not need. Thank you. We're talking about the Orange County business community and its identified issues of transportation and mobility and affordable housing as critical issues. Select one of these issues, if you will, and tell us how, if elected, you will have an impact on it in Sacramento. Mr. Mars. What I would do is I would promote public transportation as an alternate to driving uh, your own vehicle. The first thing we would need to do is to improve bus service dramatically. Now we're in a catch-22 situation here. Our streets and our freeways are de designed around the car. The only way we're going to get people out of their cars and into buses or into mass transit of other forms like the center line that was proposed or into heavy rail is to start improving service. Now, it's going to cost money to do that, and I know people don't want to pay uh, for additional taxes to support public transportation, but the problem is I don't think we can build enough concrete and uh, enough roads to solve our traffic problem, and I think we're far better uh, off spending our dollars for supporting public transportation than we are for more roads and freeways. I think in the long run it's going to pay off. Gasoline ta prices are only going to go up. The United States, with 5% of the world's population, consumes 25% of its oil. Thank you. 
Thank you. Again, we're talking about the issues of transportation and mobility and affordable housing and what the candidates would do as in Sacramento to affect one of these issues. Mr. DeVore. If I had to pick one and one that could actually be affected from Sacramento, I'd pick transportation. And I just have to say that, first of all, I disagree with my Democrat opponent, Mr. Mars, on the issue of mass transit. The funny thing about mass transit is people who advocate it usually advocate it for others, but yet drive themselves. You know, we need to put more effort into building our infrastructure here in Orange County. And let me give you a good example about how this could make a difference in improving our lives. Anyone who drives the I-5 will note that the I-5 through Orange County is twice as big as the I-5 in Los Angeles County. Now, why is this so? Well, this is so because LA County decided to build an obsolete light rail system that needs hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer subsidies every year to operate because it operates at a loss. We need to spend more money on our freeway system in Orange County. Thank you. We appreciate the candidates being here and responding to our questions. We are out of time on the question and answer portion of the forum. We have reached now the opportunity for each candidate to provide a closing statement of one minute each. Our first, uh, our first candidate, Mr. Mars. Thank you. The reason I'm running for public office, let's say the most important reason, is the fact that my generation had it the best of any generation in the history of our country. I graduated from college with no debt. My wife and I married in our 20s. We immediately bought a house and we started a family. And my wife was able to be a stay-at-home mother for our three children. My children have not had it as good as we have, and I'm concerned about what my grandchildren are going to face in the future. The reason I'm a Democrat is because of the progressive, limit, uh, uh, progressive, the gr progressive legislation that the Democrats and other progressives have promoted over the last century. These include such things as the end of child labor, the end of, uh, of, of bad food and drugs, and uh, such things as health insurance, workers' compensation, and workers' right to organize. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next closing statement from Mr. DeVore. This election upcoming on November 2nd is a critically important election, both at the state level, the national level, and the local level. At the state level, we must all work very hard to continue the effort that we began with the recall of Governor Davis one year ago. We need to give Governor Schwarzenegger more allies in his fight to reduce taxes, reduce regulation, and get the state budget under control. At the national level, we need to stand firm in the war against Islamo-fascist terrorists, and for that reason, I urge everybody to support President George W. Bush. And at the local level, we have a great opportunity in the city of Irvine to clean up Irvine city politics, to clean it up by getting Mayor Larry Agron and Beth Crom and Suki Kang and Debbie Coven out of office and put the Irvine first team in. We need to support Mike Ward, Greg Smith, Mike House, and Stephen Choi. That is a top priority for me because Irvine's the biggest city in my district. Thank you. Thank you very much. The closing statement of Mr. Baldwin. The Libertarian Party has been called the fastest growing party in America, including California. One of the things you can look into is look at www.lp.org, the official Libertarian website. You can also re receive a free packet at 1-800-ELECT-US. Call 1-800-ELECT-US and we would be happy to send you a free packet. Our presidential candidate is Mike Badnorick. You can Get information on him at badnorick.com. Also, for U.S. Senate, we have Judge Jim Gray running. I'm sure you'll be quite impressed with him. Also, take it one step further. Look into registering to vote Libertarian. You don't have to vote Libertarian, but registering to vote will help us keep ballot status strong in the state of California. Currently, we have 90,000 registered voters, and we'd like to grow even more. Thank you very much for Cox for having this forum, and thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the candidates for being with us this evening for this uh, schedule of this program and all of our series. You may turn to our website. At